What's up guys, Kenny G here coming at you with another video. Today we're going to be talking about how to set up a Samba share for your PS2 so you can play games over the network. That is, playing the games over the network through a shared drive that can be stored on a server you have somewhere, maybe in your house, maybe you have a Plex server also set up in your house and you can just have it on the same PC that's hosting that. You could even set up a uh, uh, Retro Pi, Raspberry Pi, and have that act as the uh, the share drive. But today we're going to be doing it through Windows 10 because that's the easiest, simplest way. If you have an older version of Windows, like Windows 7 or 8, you can still do it with those, but it's a, a little different, but mostly the same. The things you're going to need before we get started is a PC that you're willing to host the files on. You're going to need a PS2, pretty much any version, whether it's a Slim or the PS2 Fat. And you're going to need a PS2 memory card with Free McBoot installed on it. There's uh, multiple ways to install Free McBoot, which uh, we could do a tutorial on if people are looking for that. Otherwise, you could order it online, or you could Google around and find the tutorial itself and follow it to set up Free McBoot on a PS2 memory card. Next, you're going to need a router, and you're going to need an Ethernet cable that's going to connect your PS2 to the router. Of course, your PC should be connected to your router via a uh, cable, but you could do it wirelessly if you desire. I wouldn't personally recommend it just because that could impact transfer speeds since we're going to be playing the games over the network. So anyways, let's get started by setting up our folders here. First thing we're going to do is set up a folder that's going to host all of our files necessary on the PC side. So here I'm just clearing out some old folders and then we're going to set up a new folder and we're going to call it PS2 SMB and make sure it's all caps. Here we're going to be setting up some folders. These folders are mostly meant just for OPL. So when uh, it's trying to access files on the PC, it knows where to find them. Specifically, the one we're most concerned with is the folder called DVD. That's where the games are going to go. So if you have ISO images, that's where they're going to go. If your DVD images are larger than, say, four gigabytes, uh, like if they were dual layer DVDs, sometimes, only sometimes, uh, OPL can have issues trying to read it. So you can use different programs to rip those big disks. And then you'd leave them right in the root directory here, PS2 SMB, rather than putting them in the DVD folder. CD would be where you put in CD games and art would be where you'd put in like cover art, which OPL can reference. So here we are, we're grabbing all the image files. Uh, of different games and we're going to go into our PS2 SMB folder DVD and drop them all here Now once we've got all that set up, you can see the, all the different games. We've got Initial D, Grand Theft Audio, Grandia Resident Evil, etc. So next we're going to back out and right click on the PS2 SMB folder and We're going to go to the sharing tab at the top and then we're going to click share and We're going to add a new user called guest if there is already a guest user. That's that's fine but you need to make sure they have uh, read and write privileges. So change that to read and write. It's got to be guess and it's got to be capital G and the rest lowercase. Now advanced sharing, you just want to make sure this is correct. You want it to read PS2 SMB here. Everything else is mostly okay. You want to click on advanced here and just make sure that you're allowing full control for everyone. That's fine because this is a, just a local share over your uh, router. Anyways, next step. Okay, so next we're going to go to our control panel. Just search control panel down in Cortana. Uh, close any pop-ups and whatnot. Change your category here on the right to large icons. And then we're going to go into network and sharing center. From here, we're going to go change advanced sharing settings. And there's a few we want to do here. So we want to turn on network discovery. We want to turn on file and printer sharing. We're going to go into this next category, which is guests or public and we're going to turn on network discovery file and printer sharing and then we're going to go into all networks and we're going to turn on sharing so anyone can access it leave 128 bit encryption on and the main one you want to do here is turn off password protected sharing now you could leave that on but it's going to complicate things a little bit when you get to configuring the ps2 side of things now next we're going to go into change adapter settings which is the option above when doing this stuff, it's important to know what your router address is, as well as like basically what subnet you're on, right? So let me show you how to do that. We're going to go down to Cortana again. We're going to search for CMD. Once you're here, you're going to type in IP config. And this is going to list your current IP address. 
What you're looking for is your default gateway, which will be your router address. And your IPv4 is your actual address, your current IP address of your PC within your home network. So now let's change the properties of our network adapter. We're gonna go here, we're gonna click on properties. Okay, so here we're going to be setting our IP manually. So click use the following IP address and start typing in the IP address you want your PC to have. So the first three octaves there, you want to match the ones of the default gateway. If you don't do that, it's not gonna link up with the router and you could lose internet access. You don't want that, so make sure the first three octaves of your IP address match those of the router. That is the default gateway on the command prompt you can see in the background. Your subnet mask should match the one in the command prompt and then your default gateway should be the exact same IP address as the default gateway in your command window I have up in the background. If you don't match them, again, you could lose internet access. You don't want that to happen. Now, when it says use the following DNS server address, you can just set it to 8.8.8.8, which is a DNS server provided by Google for free. Alternate address can be 8.8.4.4, .4, which is another Google provided DNS server. Once we've done that, we're gonna back out and we're going to do another setting, which is necessary that I think a lot of people miss this step. And if you miss this step, you're not gonna get sharing working. So please uh, follow this next step very carefully. Next, we're gonna go to our search here in the bottom left again, and we're gonna search for Windows features. And you're gonna click on turn Windows features on or off. Now here's where we're gonna enable our SMB share and we need version one. So right here, you're gonna check off SMB 1.0 slash CIFS, click okay. And it's gonna do this process where it's gonna install the feature. Now that you've done all that and all your settings are set, your PC is basically ready. You can open up uh, the command prompt again and check your IP using IP config to make sure that it's set to the IP address that we want it. Okay guys, so the next thing we're doing is we're booting up our PS2. Uh, here it comes here. We've got free McBoot uh, in memory card slot one and we're gonna go down to open PS2 loader. Okay, so here we are with OPL loaded up. The games you see here are actually ones I have installed on the internal hard drive I have installed on my PS2. Now the PS2 I have is the fat PS2 and I have an old IDE drive. I know those are harder to find nowadays. I know some people load games up on USB sticks and plug it into the front ports. If you have a slim, that's like the only way you can do it besides doing it through the network. Now the network is obviously the more modern solution where you don't have to have an internal hard drive or anything like that or a USB stick. Everything is just brought in through the network and you play games on the fly. Anyways, let's get into how to set the settings within OPL to communicate with your PC. So first we're gonna go to settings here and we're going to just make sure that ethernet device start mode is set to auto. Make sure that's set to auto. Don't have it set to off or manual. Auto is just for the best. Now, once you've done that, make sure you click OK, don't hit back. If you hit back, it's gonna cancel any configuration changes you've made. Now go to network settings. This is where things are gonna get very specific. You need to make sure you get these settings right or you're gonna have issues communicating with your share. So first things we're gonna do is we're going to go down and set our IP statically. You're gonna change this setting to static and then we're gonna set an IP for our PS2. In this case, you can see I have 192.168.0.40. That's the IP address of my PS2. Now, just like on the PC side, you want the first three octaves to match the default gateway that we brought up earlier on the PC side using the IP config. So it might be worth referring back to that if you're confused at all, because your IP address, uh, the first three octaves specifically, are not necessarily going to be the same ones I have here. It could be 192.168.1. something or .2. something, etc. So it's always important to use that IP config tool to figure out what those first three octaves should be. So in my case, I've set the IP address to 192.168.0.40 for the PS2 specifically. We also want to match the subnet mask to what we saw in the IP config tool as well. Now next is the gateway. You're gonna set that to the exact same address that is in the command prompt IP config 
on the PC side. So go back and reference that and just match it up perfectly. Next is your DNS server, which you can just set to your default gateway. If you want, you can set it to 8.8.8.8, but ultimately it's not gonna make too much difference. Now next is the SMB server settings. First is address type, and you gotta make sure that it's set to IP. It's very important it's set to IP. Next is the address, and we wanna set this address to be the address we set on the PC side, specifically the address of the PC. Next is the share name. We want it to be the exact same share name that appeared on the PC side. And then after that is your user. You're just gonna set it to guest, the same thing we set it to on the PC side. It has to be exactly the same case. After that, you're gonna go down and click OK. And then this next step is important. You have to save changes. If you don't save the changes, you're gonna lose everything. Now you can hit circle and back out and just hit over to Ethernet games. And you're gonna see these are all the games we threw into our network drive. Every single one of them is here and I'll just load up one to show you that it works. Okay guys, so I'm speeding up the footage a little here just to get through all the menus so you can see the game actually works. Playing over network and no, no disc or anything like that. One of the cool features of this is you can also play import games. This is a Japanese only game that never came to North America and I'm playing this on my North American PS2. It's a pretty cool feature to be able to play all those Japanese games. So in this case I have Initial D but you can get like the Evangelion game and a whole bunch of other Japan only games as well as maybe like translated games that have been patched and play it on your actual PS2. Now of course you could play uh, those games as well through like an emulator but if you want to play them legit on your ps2 this is the way one other thing i forgot to mention is this will help revive those old ps2s that their lasers are dead in my case my laser has died twice and i've replaced it twice so at this point it's it's dead again and this feature is allowing me to still use that old ps2 even though the laser is long gone anyways uh while you're seeing this gameplay kind of play out in the background i'm gonna have to ask you guys to smash like if you found this tutorial useful because that will really help us out if if you want to help us out even more a subscription would mean a lot as we climb towards a thousand subscribers our first major milestone so yeah if you want to help us out a subscription would be really appreciated a like would be appreciated too if you want to share this with people that would be helpful and uh yeah that's about all there is for now guys so i hope you uh found this tutorial helpful i tried to break things down a little and actually you know what i'm going to include one more clip right after this just to show you what to do if on your pc you have some kind of internet issue and you can't get access to the internet after that we're going to wrap up so thanks guys uh again please smash sub and please smash like thanks guys now guys, I'm gonna show you one last thing, which is if you have any issues at any point and you lose internet connection for some reason, you can go back to control panel here again. We're gonna go back to network and sharing center. We're gonna go up to change adapter settings. We're gonna to go to our ethernet here and we're gonna to go to properties. And we're just gonna to go to IP version four. We're gonna to go to properties and we're gonna set it back to obtain an IP address automatically and obtain DNS server automatically. Just hit OK, OK, and back out, and that will sort out your issue. If at any point during this process you lose connection, basically you're just resetting it back to the default settings. By resetting your settings, you'll be able to at least start fresh, and if you want to attempt again to get this working, at least you have a fresh start. Hey guys, this is Lydia. If you like what you see, hit that like button as it helps our channel gain exposure. Also consider smashing subscribe. If you like our content, it would really mean a lot and helps our channel grow. If you want to interact with us, leave a comment down below or follow us on Twitch at super underscore dorkalicious. We'll see you next time.